My name is Luna. I've been married to Lucas for three years. We used to live alone when we were dating. But after we got married, we moved in with Lucas's dad because his job was close by. I kept working even after we got married, but I had to quit my job because Lucas's dad needed help. He started showing signs of forgetting things about a year and a half ago, and it got worse over time. We thought about putting him in a nursing home, but Lucas wanted me to take care of him at home. Luna, please, let's take care of my dad at home. It's better for his health. I get it, but I've only been here for two years. I don't think your dad wants me to take care of him all the time. Please help me out as much as you can. I had never seen my husband beg like this before, so I trusted that he would help me with the caregiving. But once I actually started looking after his dad, I realized there were challenges I hadn't anticipated. Simple tasks like going up and down stairs, using the toilet, and taking a bath became risky at home. Even though my father-in-law could still walk, he often stumbled on the stairs and had accidents in the bathroom because he couldn't support himself. So, after discussing with my husband, we decided to renovate the house. Despite still being in debt, we prioritized my father-in-law's safety over money. At first, my husband took charge of caregiving after the renovations, but gradually he stopped, blaming his workload for his absence. After a year of caring for my father-in-law, my husband gradually stopped pitching in, even going out on his days off. As my father-in-law's condition worsened, I found myself handling tasks like toileting and bathing alone. Eventually, it became too overwhelming, and I had to talk to my husband about it. You promised to help, remember? When was the last time you did anything? It's been months. He seems content with the care he's receiving, and I can't manage everything alone anymore. I've realized the challenges firsthand. Maybe we should consider a nursing home instead of trying to manage at home. We made the decision to provide home care, and we should see it through till the end. At the very least, I believe we should consider hiring professional caregivers. Your father needs assistance, and there are certified professionals who can provide that help. I'm not physically capable of handling everything, and I think certain tasks like feeding should be left to the professionals. When I proposed this, my husband didn't agree and left before we could finish our conversation. Lately, I've noticed he's been stressed about money. However, I couldn't manage caregiving alone anymore. So without his approval, I began arranging for home care services. Since his father required level 3 care, we arranged for a caregiver to come about five times a week for an hour each day. We'd also worked out a plan covered by long-term care insurance, so I wasn't concerned about the expenses. However, a problem arose on the first day of the home care services. Hello, I'm Mira, your caregiver. I'm looking forward to working with you. Nice to meet you, Mira. I'm also looking forward to working with you. While the caregiver engaged with my father-in-law, she kindly instructed me on nursing care techniques, which I found immensely helpful. I felt reassured by our decision to hire her. However, my husband returned home after being out. Luna, I never authorized home care services. What's going on here? He directed his frustration at me, despite my previous explanation that I couldn't manage caregiving alone anymore. Excuse me, Miss Caregiver? Please leave for today, he commanded, disregarding the scheduled time for her visit and effectively sending her away. Why did you arrange for home care without consulting me? I make the decisions in this house. You're not being a good wife by not listening to me. You should be able to handle caregiving by yourself. It's a waste of money, especially with the loan we took out for the renovations. Why can't you understand? I've told you numerous times that I can't handle it alone. Lucas, you've stopped helping with caregiving, haven't you? You're not keeping your promise. And the renovations were necessary for your father's safety. If he falls and gets hurt, caregiving will be even more challenging. Maybe you don't realize because you haven't been involved in caregiving for over a year now. What's all this sudden talk about? And besides, you're not working, so it's only natural for you to handle it, right? Who do you think is paying off the loan for the renovations? No matter how much I tried to explain, my husband couldn't grasp the situation. 
He genuinely believed that it was my sole responsibility to manage everything. Following that incident, I only arranged for home care when my husband was at work. Having someone to talk to, not just about caregiving, but also about the issues with my husband, and receiving advice proved to be incredibly beneficial. After several months had passed, one day my husband unexpectedly offered to take over caregiving. You've been out of the loop for over a year now. Go treat yourself. Get a haircut or go shopping. I'll handle everything today. I gratefully accepted his offer. I treated myself to a haircut for the first time in ages and enjoyed some quiet time sipping tea at a coffee shop I used to frequent. However, after about four hours, feeling anxious about leaving my inexperienced husband in charge, I decided to head home early. Upon returning home, I found an unsettling silence. My father-in-law was peacefully asleep in his room, but my husband was nowhere to be found. As I looked around the house, I discovered an envelope placed on the dining table. Inside the envelope were completed divorce papers and a letter. The letter stated, Even after the divorce, please continue taking care of my dad. I'm going on a trip for a week, so please file the divorce papers by the time I return. That's what it said. My husband abruptly ended the call, leaving me bewildered. Just before the line went dead, I'd overheard a woman's voice calling his name. It was evident he was with someone, possibly the woman he planned to go on an overseas trip with. We had only been married for three years, and the thought of my husband having an affair weighed heavily on me. As I grappled with the possibility of his infidelity, tears of regret filled my eyes. But amidst this turmoil, a glimmer of comfort emerged when I heard my father-in-law's voice calling out to me as I left. Lately, he had struggled to remember my name, but today, for the first time in a while, he called it out. Concerned about how my husband had been caring for him in my absence, I rushed to check on my father-in-law. Father, are you feeling all right? Was everything okay while I was gone? Luna, will the caregiver be here today? To my surprise, my father-in-law seemed lucid and able to hold a coherent conversation. Could dementia improve over time? She won't be here today. She'll come tomorrow morning. All right. Could you get me some paper and a pen then? Despite his usual struggle with writing, my father-in-law appeared unusually composed today. I had read that writing could help mitigate dementia symptoms, so I indulged him. Handing him paper and a pen, he began to write something, though I couldn't see what it was. After he finished, he sealed the paper in an envelope and handed it to me. Please give this to the caregiver when she comes tomorrow. With that request, my father-in-law drifted back to sleep. Was this some sort of dementia exercise with Mira? Though I was curious about the letter's contents, I chose not to peek. Hours later, when my father-in-law woke up again, he seemed to have no recollection of our earlier conversation, not even remembering my name. That night left me questioning everything. As my father-in-law drifted off to sleep, I found myself lost in thought, re-examining the letter and divorce papers my husband had left behind. Reflecting on his recent behavior, I realized there had been several suspicious actions that I had overlooked in my focus on caregiving. If my husband was indeed cheating, part of me wanted to end the marriage and leave immediately. But I couldn't abandon my father-in-law and with my inability to work while caring for him, I worried about financial independence. As morning approached, I remained undecided. When Mira arrived the next morning, I handed her the letter my father-in-law had given me. After reading it, Mira, not just a caregiver, but also a friend, approached me with concern. Luna, situations like these are unfortunately common. I'm here to support you. The letter is about my husband wanting a divorce. Yes, it seems Mr. Henley noticed something was wrong and reached out for help. There's more in the letter, but we'll discuss it later. Since we have limited time before your husband returns, let's act quickly. With determination, Mira arranged for another caregiver to take over Mr. Henley's care. Let's go, Luna. We have work to do. Following Mira, we arrived at a law firm. Mira, why are we here? I inquired. You'll understand once we're inside, she replied cryptically. 
Though confused, I decided to trust Mira and followed her into the building. Thank you for coming today. I'd like to discuss a request I received from Mr. Henley, primarily regarding the matter of gifting property during one's lifetime to you, Luna. The lawyer greeted us, handing me a document. Stunned, I accepted the paper. It was a notarized document, prepared by Mira at Mr. Henley's request. It outlined Mr. Henley's intention to gift me $36,000 and his apartment during his lifetime. Amazed by this unexpected gesture, Mira began to explain. On the first day of my home visit, Mr. Henley brought up this matter. He wanted to express his gratitude towards you, Luna. However, as you weren't legally adopted by him, he couldn't pass on his assets to you upon his death. Hence, he decided to make this lifetime gift instead. I'm incredibly grateful. I need to thank my father-in-law immediately, I exclaimed, eager to express my appreciation. But before we could leave, Mira interjected, we need to make one more stop. After following Mira and making another stop, we returned home. Upon arriving, I expressed my deep gratitude to my father-in-law, even though he seemed unable to fully comprehend. I continued to thank him earnestly, Sadly, my father-in-law passed away three days later due to complications from his worsening dementia. I tried calling my husband, who was traveling abroad, to inform him, but he didn't pick up, perhaps assuming it was about the divorce. Left with no other option, Mira and I proceeded with the funeral arrangements amidst the gathering of relatives and friends. My husband's absence, as the biological son of my father-in-law, seemed to disappoint the relatives. When my husband returned home two days later, oblivious to the situation, he was immediately bombarded with questions from the relatives. Hey, you need to help me out here. I swear I'm not cheating. I was just on vacation for a change. After taking care of my dad every day, you can't just assume the worst. Even if I say I was caregiving, there's no proof, right? But I know for a fact that you were spotted at the airport with your mistress, acting like a couple. After my accusation, my husband seemed resigned and silently endured the harsh words from the relatives. Several days later, once the tension had eased, I initiated divorce proceedings. I planned to move into the apartment my father-in-law had gifted me before his passing. As I made preparations for the divorce, my husband called. Luna, where are you? It turns out you're the beneficiary of his life insurance, not me. All I was supposed to receive was his life insurance payout. What's going on? What did you say to my dad while caring for him? You and that caregiver seemed to have an understanding. You must have been planning this together. It was your father's decision. Mira simply followed his wishes. Indeed, we're getting divorced, and you and your mistress will be hearing from my lawyer soon. Please ensure you pay the settlement. What do you mean we're divorcing? That's correct. Since you received my father's life insurance, consider it your settlement payment. I won't ask for anything. It seemed my husband had conveniently forgotten about leaving me the divorce papers to submit before his overseas trip. I was taken aback by his apparent disregard for our previous arrangement. Weren't the divorce papers left by you with a letter asking me to submit them? I reminded him. And the life insurance is an inheritance from your father, not something I received from you. You should cover the cost of the settlement. My husband was rendered speechless and remained silent at my firm assertion. Realizing we were getting nowhere, we decided to end the call. Despite his subsequent attempts to contact me, I followed Mira's advice and changed my phone number. I still see Mira occasionally. Even after my father-in-law passed away, she continued to support both him and me more than my own family did. I'm truly grateful to Mira. Eventually, word seemed to reach my husband and his mistress, and I received a call from their lawyer. Because I heard from Lucas that you were the boss. Although I was unaware of the circumstances, I deeply apologized for vacationing while Lucas's father was struggling. I've already paid compensation. I don't intend to see Lucas anymore. That was the end of it. I had expected resistance to paying the compensation, so I was surprised by the unexpected response. I couldn't fathom why a sensible person like her would fall for someone like my husband. Meanwhile, my husband ended up paying the compensation. 
It turned out her family was quite affluent, and my husband, attempting to keep up with her, depleted nearly all his savings. I heard he even footed the bill for the vacation as a display of goodwill. Whether or not he depleted his savings was of no concern to me. I intended for him to pay the full compensation, even if it took time. Since the family home was in my father-in-law's name, he wouldn't have trouble finding a place to live. However, with the remaining payments on the loan for the elder care renovation, coupled with the compensation, it would likely be a significant burden. Each month, even if it was deducted from my husband's salary, he wouldn't have much left. It was common knowledge among our relatives, so seeking help from them was out of the question. I hoped he would reflect on his actions. I relocated to the apartment my father-in-law had gifted me, where I now live comfortably. I'm using the money inherited from my father-in-law to pursue a caregiving certificate. Mira is assisting me in this endeavor. Not only do I aspire to be a caregiver, but I also aim to emulate Mira's support for families in need.